Hey, New Life Church, I'm excited to be with you guys today, and I'm so thankful for this season where we set aside some time at the beginning of the year to focus our attention on the Lord. I'm really thankful for our pastors who instilled this value in us years ago that giving God our first is really the same as giving Him our best. Whether it's time at the beginning of the year or time at the beginning of our day or of our paycheck, just the idea that when we give God our best, we are honoring Him before we honor ourselves. And so my prayer for this season, for all of us individually, is that Jesus is truly honored by our pursuit of Him. And today I wanna to go a little bit further into the Lord's Prayer. I've loved walking through that as a church. And the part of the prayer that I wanna focus on today is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, or Luke chapter 11, verse 4. And it says, Father, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. You know, something I love about Jesus teaching us how to pray is that Jesus always has a way of making the complicated things simple. And if we're all honest, I believe we all could admit today that there's been some point in our lives that prayer felt intimidating. Maybe we saw someone else pray and we thought, I don't know how to do it the way they do it. I don't know how to say the words they're saying. I don't know the format or all the ingredients that are supposed to be a part of it. I believe the disciples felt very similar to us when they asked Jesus to start teaching them what prayer really looks like. Because the disciples had been around the church, they'd been around a lot of religious leaders, they'd heard a lot of prayers, but they saw something different in Jesus's prayer life. They saw that when Jesus got away and got alone with his father, when he came out at that time, something was different with him. Maybe he was walking in a greater amount of peace, maybe a greater amount of confidence or boldness. And then they watched Jesus minister out of that place of prayer and they saw so much fruit. They began to ask Jesus, can you teach us to pray the way you pray? And I love when Jesus gave them the Lord's Prayer, we may not realize it, it's a 38 second prayer, that's it. But in 38 seconds, Jesus had a way to put all of the ingredients that we need to have a successful prayer life. And I believe the enemy wants to intimidate you and I so that we will so quickly discredit ourselves and detach ourselves from the very thing that is meant to be our life source. And that is our ability to talk with our Father. That's what prayer is. It's our voice going up before our Father and His voice coming back down to us. So the portion that I'm talking about today, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. This portion means a lot to me because I personally have learned from this part of the Lord's Prayer in my own life. The first part, Father, forgive us our sins. I love that Jesus encouraged us every single day in our prayer to just simply allow the Holy Spirit to do a quick assessment in us. Is there anything that I did in this past day, because this prayer was meant to be prayed every day, is there anything that I did yesterday, all the way to today, that was against your will, that came out of my own desire, came out of me wanting to please myself rather than please you and allowing the Holy Spirit to highlight the things in us that we are doing on a regular basis that are not of the Lord. And simply to humble ourselves and to admit it to our Father, God, we need your forgiveness in our life today. We still have weaknesses, we still have areas, we need your covering and your mercy. And the Bible says if we will confess our sin, he is faithful and just, not only to forgive us our sin, but to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But I love that Jesus doesn't just stop there and say, pray out a prayer of confession and repentance and forgiveness every day and stay humble before me. But he goes one step further. He makes it conditional on our ability to give the very thing that we are wanting to get from the Father. In other words, Jesus is like, if you're willing to give forgiveness, then I am more than willing to give it back to you. And the second part of that phrase says, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. I don't know about you, but sometimes that's not very easy for me. There are moments where I know God is encouraging me to forgive someone in my life. And because of my sense of justice, I just can't let it go. It could be something spoken to me, something done to me, something done to someone I care about. And I remember when I was in college, God really began to challenge me to specifically forgive people in my life for wrongs that I was holding on to. 
And I remember walking through a list, a list of wrongs from someone I care a lot about. But I got to one memory and I remember just authentically crying out to the Lord and saying, God, I cannot forgive this. It is not in me. It was something that felt so unjust, I couldn't let it go. And I remember God so quickly saying back to me, Rebecca, it's not in you, but it is in me and I am in you. And I remember at that point thinking about the moment that Jesus hung on the cross and there he is hanging in complete agony, literal agony, looking at his torturers in the eyes, people that got enjoyment from abusing him and torturing him for the goal of ending his life. And in that moment of agony, they're not even stopping, they're continuing to hurl their insults as they watch him die on the cross. And in that very place where if anyone at any time had a right to hold something against someone, it was Jesus in that moment. And he looked at his torturers in the eyes and he could have asked his father for judgment. He could have declared vengeance and retaliation or punishment. But he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. He chose instead forgiveness and intercession and blessing. And I remember God showing me in that moment where I was the one who needed to forgive, that if his son had the ability to forgive that level of trauma, that level of injustice in the very moment that it was taking place, then his spirit living on the inside of me would give me the ability to do the same. And if we're all looking at 2020, there's been a lot of wounds that have happened this year, a lot of words that were spoken, a lot of decisions that were made that we may regret or we may be holding against someone else. And can I encourage you this year, as we move into 2021, to let this be a year where number one, repentance is a hallmark of your prayer life and forgiveness. And when you find that you are at the end of yourself and you have no more capacity to forgive, may you find the power of the Spirit of Jesus rise up on the inside of you and enable you to do what you never thought was possible. That's all I have. I love you, New Life Church. I'm so glad to be with you.